hey, pretty soon, learning is a lifelong process. And um, when you've got knowledge, you should also be making, making the time to share that knowledge. Um, so as an example, today, uh, running some mushroom workshops with, uh, I've got a couple of instructors. So uh, Steve Lukacic, who you may know from Instagram, Stevie Funfer, and um, uh, Lucy Emmett, a local mushroom enthusiast. And we are setting up, uh, probably got about 40 people coming in today and learn about mushrooms. No, 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 Mirka. Yeah, we can straighten it out. Okay, lift. So, Back to got a um, local sports store, which has sponsored work. the event for us. Running a canopy. Uh, which way are we straightening? Some coffee, some donuts. Maybe if we square it up to the trail. That's what I'm trying to. Okay. <laughs> Good, we're just trying to get set up before all of our people start okay. arriving. Okay. Parker, you get the other table. Yeah, we need we need our tables set up. Completely clicked in. Yeah, there's um, one of them that we can click. I think it is clicked in, it just doesn't look super stable. Tuna chair. Tuna chair. Is that, is that what it is? Puma. Oh, I said poo chair. Poo chair? No. Oh. Oh, oh, okay, just straighten it out. Everything's closed on it, so. Um, is, is there, are there are a couple bucks, like, it's worth throwing in your pack. And again, for me, what this does is... Ecosystem on Earth. Okay, so now they're there for you to take. Nature wants you to take it together. This is how important this is. Are you good to go? All right, so, everyone ready? There are old mushroom hunters, and there are bold mushroom hunters, but there are no old, bold mushroom hunters. Right? You got it? And there's another a really good one, oldie but goodie like that. All mushrooms are edible, some only one time. <laughs> and it is and it is very, very, very true. There are a lot of advantages to taking an in-person class. Hey look, I put my uniform on. My blue shirt, my blue YouTube shirt. Um, so you know, some of them being as opposed to watching a video, it's much more interactive, right? You can ask questions, you can get answers directly from the person. Um, you're there, you're face to face, you know it's not just some random dude pretending to know something on the internet. Um, the other nice thing is that you will meet people who are like-minded and you may then uh, develop some friendships, new foraging buddies, new hunting buddies, new fishing buddies, new um, tricks and tips for land access uh, or shared property access or things like that. So that's a big advantage um, and just the social aspect of it. So, you know, I think it, <clears throat> you can't, you can never really attend too many of those learning opportunities. So we're pretty fortunate that the weather is cooperating with us today. We got a big group out. Everybody's like enthusiastic and, and ready to learn. Two really good instructors. Um, really happy to be able to uh, help facilitate this coming together and, and just get more people out learning about the land around them. Even if they're if it doesn't give them the confidence to start uh, picking and eating mushrooms at least it gives them the knowledge to uh to get over like just an initial i don't want to say an irrational fear but like a at least there'll be more of a respect than a fear um because a lot of our fears are really should be more driven by respect than than just fear themselves respectful caution i would say um so the one group, they're already out having a little forage around. Um, this group is learning some some of those uh, basics um, and they'll be out foraging around. It's kind of nice too, because you get to see um, what the uh, instructors themselves are actually bringing with them and using when they're in the woods. Maybe um, particular field guides that they're partial to, uh, specific tools, and you'll learn different different little tricks and tips as you go along. So we've had torrential rain for about a week, um, but warm temperatures at night. So I'm really, 
really curious. It's actually been too rainy to go out most of the time. But I'm really curious to uh, get out here and uh, see what kind of mushrooms we find. Somebody found that mushroom before us. I think one thing that's maybe surprising to um, introductory mushroomers is just how uh, ubiquitous and invisible mushrooms are most of the time because we're familiar with the fruiting bodies but they're they're everywhere everywhere under the soil and through the leaf litter and under the bark of trees performing their, their ecological functions of decomposing um, dead matter and the other thing that's often um, surprising for people is learning about some of the utilitarian purposes of mushrooms so aside from you know whether they're edible or not um, whether you can use them to make things or whether they have a medicinal purpose or you can use them in a, a bug smudge uh, or for starting fires so pretty uh, pretty well the sky's the limit with mushrooms there's so many of them out there it's a lot to learn and then of course they vary with habitat and geography whether you're east and west in a hardwood forest or a conifer forest um, so it's just just a lot to fill your brain with a mushroom with scales that has just recently come out of its universal veil that indicates to me this is probably a guild mushroom and as I want to really encourage you to do when you find a new guild mushroom in the forest first thing you do is try and find out if it's got that vulva okay that's what I'm doing here I'm excavating down into the soil to find out if it has this key identifying feature so I'm just using the back end of my knife here to kind of dig down and have a look and how I'm gonna know whether this thing has a vulva or not is when I get all the way down to the bottom if I see mycelium I know I've gotten to the bottom of the stipe okay um, this is the shaggy mane uh, there's a ton I just found like probably 70 of these or more um, on wow. the Cape Paceway this morning wow. as a and so that's that one but then there's these are also caprinas or like inky cap group um, this one I believe is more like a the micaceous one but I'm not a hundred percent sure you're on oh wait I'm oh no I was gonna you. film you that's what oh I thought. I thought I see what you mean okay sure Right here. No victory lap. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> here, we, why don't we just redo that while... I, there you go. Now you're on. I'm ready. Yeah, so we're just uh, out. Stevie Funfer, Justin. Ha la 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 that's why you wanted to film an intro for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. It just came to me as if in a dream. Yeah, yeah. And uh, doing some bird hunting. With Millie the dog. Yeah, this is my first time hunting with a dog. It's awesome. She's I, great. I'm afraid that I'm going to get spoiled. It's uh, it's fun. Yeah. She's still young, right? She's still learning, but that's good. Yeah. Puts no, she did a great job. We were out. Uh I've hunted uh, with a Springer Spaniel two times before, and uh, she was pretty much almost as good as any of the other like older dogs. And she's eight months old. She's doing amazing. She was just rocking the birds, and she did she did wreck a couple shots on me, but you know she's still learning. <laughs> what a good girl. She not no really. She listens. She comes back every time. She's super good, man. So it, it's gonna be fun again. In the truck. Sit. Look Sit. What, she's such a good listener. Stay. Hey, sweetie pie. Yeah. No, wait, no, no, don't drink coffee. You're hyper enough. So, Jenna, this uh, <laughs> this vest here is just a bit of armor on her chest, right? For oh, yeah. uh, bashing through the bush. Yeah. Super good idea. She's eat <laughs> she almost ate the microphone. <laughs> Anything with fur on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Better watch out, fun fur. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Mm. Looking for birds, finding berries. Some of the. Yeah. Yeah, I think they will. The uh, winter greens. A little bit of uh, bre fresh breath after the coffees, right? The bird down. Oh, uh, well, it both works. I'm no. I'm not. Your ways okay? I just don't want to fuck up your thing, you know. I'm not a professional dog trainer. More of that winter green. And I saw a little puffball off the side here, so might as well have a little peek. 
feels like the kind of day when you could uh, find a big hen of the woods or a big chicken of the woods or uh, some hedgehog mushrooms. I think that one's a little bit, oh yeah, a little bit soft inside. But uh, we got our first frost of the season last night. So that might, might uh, change up the mushroom landscape a little bit. There's also, it's um, oh, totally tangled in a stick here. What have I done? I'm still here. Uh, really good year for acorns. I can hear them falling out of the oaks while we're walking along. Could easily pick bushel baskets of them. If I didn't still have a bushel basket of them all dried and stored up from the big wild year, then I would maybe pick some more. It'd be a good spot to, uh, you know, if you had a spot like this on your property, you could run pigs through it at this time of year and they just get fat on acorns and mushrooms. There's some more. He found some turkey tails and some honey mushrooms on the other side of the road. I'm actually not sure. Is there some kind of like a some kind of a little poured mushroom? Some more just acorns everywhere. Sometimes I can't help but fill my pockets with them. There's a uh, chicken of the woods and. This one's in nice condition, so I'm going to harvest the outer edge of this one. And there's some more growing out of the same old piece of oak. And these ones are uh, not as nice. So just collect a little bit of this one and add it to our foraging stash. tripod with me today anyway there's um some of those so it's important to have a good kind of a good foraging bag i just brought a, um, a cloth bag that i can keep in my hunting bag so my mushrooms go in there and then in my uh, hunting bag i've got you know my license my emergency kit a little bit of rope flashlight those kinds of things but you don't want them all to mix around together so we'll just uh, try and keep it a little bit organized. I've got uh, acorns in my side pocket here. And I also was picking up a couple of the, uh, or I found somebody's old shotgun shell, oak galls. So they have a lot of tannins in them. You can use them for a dye. And uh, my mother is looking for dyeing components. In, uh, in my area, these red oak forests are, uh, they're pretty, awesome foraging spots so for example oh here we are so there's another there's another oak gall from my mother but under here there's a very nice very nice hedgehog mushroom so i'm going to cut that out carefully and i'm just keeping my ears open so steven Justin are working the dog there over beside me and they're finding a bunch of stuff too so we're gonna have to do a gonna have to do a check-in Ooh, some of this one is not in great shape so we'll just cut out those bad parts keep this main piece here I think trim judicious judiciously Something else going on around here too. There's a bunch of I'm trying to figure out if these are like little mushrooms or if uh, they are little mushrooms. They look like um, like so. For example, there are 
pine needles uh, all over here. But then there are these little thin guys coming out of the ground and I don't they're not a uh, there's some there too see them in the light those are all mushrooms and uh, you know if you pause this and kind of zoom around on the photo or on the screen you'll see that there are dozens and dozens and hundreds and hundreds of them all around me and I have no idea what these are I'm gonna get a picture with my camera though your head up and you'll see it uh, down left side of the tree, right there. Oh, a little guy. Yeah. Yes. It looks Late forest, the chicken of the woods. And it's even a better one than you think. It's Cincinnati. It is Cincinnati. Yeah. Oh, it's so, so nice. So what's the difference? The best eating of all the chickens is what this is, my friend. The main difference, let me show you one. So come up on top of Oh, sorry, are you coming? Oh, sure. I unloaded just in case the dog didn't us. Too, so. Oh, I guess I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. My safety's on, but I'll just do this. At least. Yeah, yeah. How do you so, tell the difference? Well, I'll show you. You want to? Yeah, I'm on. I want to know. So look up on top. Uh, superficially from the top, it looks just like, uh, you know, it's it's super super cousin, uh, common cousin uh, sulfurious, right? It's got yeah. these yellow uh, bands and a little bit of striation around the edge. I find them typically to be slightly lighter around the margin, okay. but that's not the thing. That's not reliable. What's reliable is what? Let me pick one of these for you and show you. The underside is not that brilliant, crazy yellow. It's white or okay. white, an off-white. In this case, yeah. it's kind of a creamy off-white. I've seen them white-white. Huh. And But the most important thing is, feel this with your hand, Jer. Oh yeah, they're like spongy all the way. Oh man, so they're, they're like so tender and good whole, to eat. This the is the is best good. chicken to eat, man. This is like actual chicken. Feel that? Yeah. No. Get now. Feel. You know. I wish we had a a sulfurious to show you the difference yeah, in the texture. There's one over there, I think. At some point, why don't we make our right, way back, or if you want to show only, your viewers, it's only one cap, but you could show them the difference. So this guy, if you watch, if you watch closely. If go, go in tight. If I squeeze this, there's water's going to come out. See that water? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will never get that out of sulfurious. Oh, okay. Okay, that's how you. That's another good uh, tell on this guy is just how supple and full of water it is. Yeah. A lot of times you'll actually little, see little dimples of water coming out of it. Little that's drops. That's cool. Okay. This is the best eater. This is the, this is the score of the woods. Hey. Yeah. There we didn't get skunk today. I know. I'm pretty sure then that's what I got the last time I found one because I found one down nice by the and ski club like that, and then I found one out behind um, Redbridge, and my my kids like I, I do it in fish crisp. Just okay. butter and fish crisp. Oh yeah, love it. Dip it in milk, fish oh, yeah. crisp, done. Nice. Oh my god, they love it. You just committed a YouTube cardinal sin. You, oh. you gave locations. I have to beep them out now. People start coming out here. Oh yeah, in it's always secret lake, <laughs> yeah, secret. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on locations, we over, give them the over behind Johnny. Oh, hey, that's what you get on locations. <laughs> all right, buddy. Right that's what I like for yeah. you. That's where we're picking. <laughs> I was talking Redbridge, Alabama. <laughs> oh, Redbridge, Redbridge, Alabama. Yeah, yeah. not the borough of Redbridge in the UK. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Oh, I always thought you were talking about the actual. In my little one horse town, we have a bridge that's painted red. So uh, I thought yeah. it was. We could be anywhere. We could be anywhere. Oh, look at her. Look at you. Look at Billy. She's so. Happy. This is how dogs shoot guns, right? Yeah, exactly. Like this is yeah. Start. Notice that I am completely yeah. uh, open, open here yeah. <laughs> because of dogs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> quit eating my microphone. <laughs> so, so quick harvesting tip: how you cutting those off? How close do you cut them? Uh, Let me get my knife. Take? Here, I got a oh, knife you got a big long one. So get that. <laughs> there you go, knife. proper fillet knife. That, that means exact business. So same if this was um, sulfurious, laid a porous sulfurious, yeah. you would you would leave as much of this as possible. So um, let me show you. So that guy on Cincinnati. Let me show you actually, because why? Actually, I harvest it almost right to the tree. Look at this. It's still super supple and nice. Yeah. They do get a little dry and harder as they get closer to the. You know, I don't know if we would call that a site, but the edge. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the growth at the. The spawn edge yeah and then so for uh for the normal dry one you would really only want to take uh, let me show you i'll get all of it after but you would really only want to take maybe the first inch or two of the edge yeah okay and there's two reasons for this number one this is on uh on the sulfurious on the really common chicken this is the nice tender part yeah right and plus you're leaving some to spore out and being a good steward of the forest right yeah. which is like a huge huge thing right you don't want to just take 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 from the forest you want to give something back and that's a small gesture to make so but on this particular guy and there's Lots really? of it around. There's a whole, if you look on the other side of this tree, there's a little baby coming, which we're not going to take. Uh, can you see that, Jerry? Oh, yeah. This guy. Yep. We we're going to leave that guy. It's going to grow up big and spore out. So I feel comfortable grabbing a few of these little guys. 
Okay, I don't mind that. And just cut them pretty close. Cutting them pretty close because the, it's so tender up where the other one is not, it's kind of worth doing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also leave some. Okay. okay, still we're still encouraging foragers rules here, right? We never take more than two thirds of anything and my personal goal is to not take more than half of anything. So I'm gonna leave a few of these fronds, okay? For uh, to continue sporing out and growing, etc. Preferably little ones like that, you know, that was, this is not a great thing to show you uh, me doing once in a while when it's something real good, like a, like a, like a Cincinnatus, you know, I'll, so uh, I'll take this it. This is the one I picked before. You think that's the sulfurious? Yes. The yellow? Yeah. So and now look at the difference. There. You can see a very, on a bigger one that gets even deeper yellow yeah, yeah, and okay. more like fluorescent. Firm, right? And you can feel the firmness. Absolutely. The yeah. 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 That's neat. So that's a good side by side right there. Yeah. Awesome. So anyway, we're going to harvest this guy. We're going to fry that up like, uh, like crazy people later. That's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. We'll show it. We'll show it if we have time to cook together. Yeah, today. if we have time, yeah. Oh man, I, I, I had a pan and a propane tank and yes, uh, my yeah, gas you were all set. I took yeah. it all out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Well. So this guy, I'm gonna do quite a lot of it and leave a few. See, have a look. Okay. Okay. Now that's, honestly, that's a little more than two thirds. That's probably not a great example, but I am leaving one like I'm not gonna touch at all on what that What is that way? How much, what does that feel like? Three, three four pounds. Yeah, Easy. nice. Feel it. I should have brought a bigger bag. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And also have a look on the Beauty. inside, man. Look at that. Look at all the juicy yeah. juice yeah, in there. Just running out of there. Right? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, have a look over here, guys. Oh, we have some nice big fat ones. Big hedgehogs. Okay, I'm loading my gun again. It's just beside my backpack. But being safe. Oh yeah, there's two nice ones, man. At least three, four. So I'll show you what I see. I see one here. One there one there and then that big one yeah monstrosity let's uh see what kind of shape they're in yeah just uh set you guys down over here can you see there you can see all right yeah there's three right here you fully is it hedgehog? oh no it's a hedgehog no, no, yeah, it's it a nice hedgehog. oh it was so they're so tight from the, i was thinking it's just the angle i was looking at yeah, yeah you've picked these before yeah, yeah. oh yeah. there's a uh, Oh, a little guild mushroom there. You look in great shape, man. Like perfect. The prime, eh? Super mega prime. So we haven't got a bird yet, but my backpack is full of mushrooms. This is why once you get into foraging, you never get skunked, right? Yeah, I know. That's my <laughs> mantra. I know. So let me tell these guys a little bit about this mushroom. So this is in the hiddenum genus. Um, you know, you always want to say rapandum because that's the wood hedgehog. That's the most common, but they've recently broken into like 40 subspecies based on new DNA testing and stuff. So I don't know what the, I have no freaking idea what this particular species is, but the, here's the, this is why this is an exception because generally there's no maybes in mushroom hunting. There's no, oh, I think I know what that is. But with this genus, particularly with the hiddenums, especially in Ontario, uh, they're all edible. So uh, not a whole lot of worry in terms of edibility or toxicity once you know the key identifying features of this guy. Yeah, these are good beginner mushrooms. Really good beginner mushrooms, yeah. I'll get that out of the frame for you there, buddy. So you're still going. You want me to get that bag out for you? Uh, sure. Yeah. Maybe put those, or maybe, you know what, that chicken would probably be better off in the bag. What you, oh, you have it in a different bag, I see. Yeah, ostensibly we're bird hunting, but um, <laughs> yeah, apparently we got about uh, probably six pounds of mushrooms on us now. Even more. Yeah, but but we just keep finding good stuff. These are just coming into fruit, coming into season. These are uh, our malaria. This is honey mushrooms, and super fresh, exactly in the stage you want to harvest them. Yeah, beautiful. I usually cut them off in your bag. Mine's, mine's oh, full. yeah, and it's got that big heavy uh, chicken of the woods. It'll squish these guys, I think. Yeah, these stipes are not great. Um, no, I always trim them closer to the cap. Yeah, I mean, it depends. When they're in this state, though, like, look how nice and... Oh, yeah. You know, it's just a, when they're young like that, I'll take them. Yeah. You normally, they, they start to get woody as they get older. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, you then you would take a little more. But these, like, they zero insect holes, zero anything, and looking, like, literally, like, grocery store perfect, if yeah. that's a thing that appeals to you. I, I like to pick them when they're like... Even these guys here, Not yeah, even open. Little, little buttons. Oh, they're great like that too. Yeah. This is just, you know, a little more bang for the buck in terms of meat. Yeah. And they're still super firm and fresh and nice. I like, I'll eat that all day. Uh, this is, this is the stage where I'd like prefer to find them. Yeah. Just cause it's, you know, you, you collecting these all day. You get, you know, you get one side for your steak. Club. Anyway, here we are. 
Shrimp of the woods. A couple of old puff balls, but look at this. Shrizamp. The aborted Entoloma. Entoloma abortivum. Uh huh. That's what I said. That, that's what I thought you said. <laughs> you see that little bad boy? Yep. Nice and um, nice and fresh, and eh? mostly detritus free, which is hard to get. But look, we already got slugs. Oh yeah. I'll get up on there and get our dinner. Yeah. So these guys. Yeah, more. This is a really interesting mushroom. This I'll try and explain this concisely. It's hard to wrap your head around. So this I wish I, I was just in there looking for the parent. So the uh, Entoloma abortivum. It's a sort of. Uh, you know, inconspicuous gray looking gilled mushroom that you could, could, could confuse for almost any other mushroom. Uh, doesn't It looks like nothing special. And in that form, when it's in the parent stage, uh, it's nothing too special. Like it's okay, it's a decent garlic and butter deli delivery method, but it's not a great mushroom, it's okay. But what happens then is, now we're not quite sure. I don't, maybe we know, maybe we don't know. So don't quote me on this. This morph of that exact same parent mushroom is the result of a battle between Armillaria and Entoloma, okay? Now, I don't know if this means it won or lost. <laughs> I'm really not yeah. sure yet. Somebody, I'm not sure science even somebody knows. Somebody won. Somebody won and colonized the other one, and either the Entoloma turns into this or the honey mushroom turns into this, and this is the result, and it's a really delicious um, uh, mushroom that th this, the aborted stage of its development, what it, whichever one this is, is a really, cool kind of shrimp like and it even has pink flesh inside let me show you that one doesn't have isn't too pinky but sometimes they're quite pink inside and it does have the texture kind of a freaking shrimp or popcorn and uh it's not a super like flavorful mushroom but it's great for like like sauteing up with other things that you where you want to add flavor or throwing it in a soup or a stew or something yeah and uh man are they ever good so we'll, we'll grab a few of those clean them up and uh take some home yeah because if you get in under here there's all kinds. Yeah. Uh, there. Here we are. There's the little shrimp village right there. <laughs> shrimp village. Well, it's pretty bright and also pretty shadowy here, but there's picked some acorns just for the heck of it. And then some of these oak gulls from my mom. We ended up with some hedgehog mushrooms, some turkey tails. Got these uh, big sulfur shelves and down in here we got the honey mushrooms more hedgehogs nice fresh honeys too eh? yeah and look at this i just was stopped by the lick bow yeah all right and uh picked up uh, a few of these my friend that's right so this guy right here i just shot this guy on the way home we got skunked on that mission that we went on we got a ton of mushrooms so that was nice and yeah. that and that uh Cincinnati's is a real score that's like always makes my day when you get something that you really sometimes i go a whole year i don't see one of those you know yeah so uh yeah this was a bit of an unfortunate situation this guy um i've got a bunch more in here including i don't know if i you probably haven't seen this guys but i did shoot only my second of my lifetime spruce grouse uh look on my instagram for that look at this beautiful little little orange eye and his beautiful black uh chest feathers which is very different from a roughie yeah yeah but look at the size, size difference. Like yeah. that's probably a bird of the year, you know? And this is like, a, th these birds that uh, I shot one nice big one like like this yesterday. See, so like at two nice big adult ones. I shot three yesterday and this one just on the way out, but uh, we were driving in the car and I had my shotgun encased. And we said, so we were just driving down the old, the old road there and saw uh, three of them. And I got out of the car all legal and everything. But I was like, I f was fumbling with my damn, my damn case. I couldn't get the zipper open. And in that time, they all went off, and then I went and chased them into the bush. And those birds, I think probably, they went over a hill, so I think they just flushed immediately. Zero sign of them. But then uh, I did a big loop in that area because it just looked like great habitat, and there was two more. Um, I shot this guy standing, and the other one flushed right over the main road, and I, I couldn't shoot over the road. So I actually went to the other side of the road after, unloaded, went all the way over there, looked, I couldn't find it. But anyway, I had them dead nuts too. When you go I like track him, track him, and then right over the road, I'm like, ah, wow, so be it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it was good. It was uh, we at least won, so it's better better to kick in the pants. Yeah, well, and all the mushrooms, right? So. Yeah, never get skunked, oh, right? It was a good day. That's right. Check it out here. I got uh, the Excalibur rocking. I turn this off though, because I'm gonna do a little bit of cooking, and we don't want that background noise. That's for sure. <laughs> There is some turkey tail that uh, 
There's a lot of moisture in there, it seems like. Um, turkey tail that uh, we harvested. Look at these. I didn't even cut them up. These are the shrimp of the woods, the aborted entolomas. I just threw them in whole. Right now they are leathery. So they need to dry a bit more. And these right here, these are the painted boletes. They're one of the swayless mushrooms. They're a little bit leathery. They're not quite dry yet either. But uh, what I want to do is do a big mushroom gravy with this big mixed bag of mushrooms. So let's start in on that and I'm going to cook up some salmon to go with that. Oh, here's a hot tip. I have a fruit fly problem in my uh, kitchen so I use these fine mesh, I don't even know what these bags are, but I can um, put green tomatoes in here and let them ripen up and the fruit flies can't get at them. Works awesome. Uh, I gotta get a little bit organized here. So I only need one cutting board for now. I'm drying some of these acorns that I picked up and I've got these galls. So I have to give those to my mom. She likes to dye wool and um, fabric. So she's been experimenting with different, different materials. Um, check it out. So Justin um, sent over some maple sap maple cider vinegar maple cider vinegar six percent acetic acid he's even got sweet labels on it uh so i'm super excited to try that out maybe not tonight i gotta think about how i want to use that and steve brought me some chutney made with ground cherries and I forget what else i could have actually gotten skunked and i still would have come out ahead this weekend because of their generosity all right, uh, what I want to do is to separate these mushrooms into the uh, honey mushrooms. So these guys, I'm gonna boil these first before I saute them. So I wanna get those guys all set aside in a pot, just checking for bugs and twigs. Honey mushrooms, honey mushrooms, honey mushrooms. Sometimes just double checking that they've got the downy ring there on them. No slugs. I don't think honey mushrooms usually have slugs on them in my experience. Oops, kick the camera. These hedgehogs, hey, we're gonna chop those guys up. Honey mushroom. And we've got these chickens of the wood, chicken of the woods. Uh, these are the yellow ones here. So what I did with these off camera is um, I saved some pieces of them, but I mostly broke them up into their individual flat shelves and then repacked them into uh, the freezer. So Steve said he just freezes them. And then when he wants to use them, take them out, thaw them out, uh, and then do whatever you want with them. So I'm gonna try that this year. Just leave them frozen. It's probably the best way to preserve them. Um, they don't. Uh, they don't necessarily saute and freeze, or uh, they don't dehydrate well. Not like the little shrimps of the woods. Throw these guys in here. That's a piece of a hedgehog mushroom. Okay, honey, 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 honey. Discard a couple stems here. And boom. Okay, they're all in there. Man, I saw so many today too. Uh, but I refrained from picking them because I already have enough of them to deal with at the moment. We'll get these boiling. And I've got this uh, deep cast iron pan here and it's got a little bit of lard in it from cooking before. So I'm gonna start to uh, simmer down some mushroom in there. And I think it would be crazy not to put some onion in there with them. So let's do that. Let's get a knife. Let's touch up the knife on the work sharp. Um, if you don't already have 
one of these workshops, you should go to your Princess Auto or your favorite hardware store and get your hands on one. I use them for everything from axes to uh, pocket knives, kitchen knives. I mean, obviously it's a little bit small for doing uh, a knife of this size, but it works. It works. So, slicing, dicing, put them in the pan. The uh, teeth on these hedgehogs always, always fall off. You can see there's a big mess of them here. Not going to worry about that too much. So, just to get things started, I'm going to go put this on low. Look at all those loose teeth. And then um, get this onion cooking in another cast iron pan. So most of the uh, mushroom gravy, mushroom sauce recipes that I've looked at call for a bit of heavy cream and I only have half and half, but we can reduce it. And um, call for some tomato paste, but I'm going to use, uh, I'm just gonna make, dice up some tomatoes and put them in. So I've got these nice uh, Italian tomatoes, which have been ripening in my fruit fly impervious bag and that's what uh that's the tomato that i'll use for this so first let's get these onions cooking in a cast iron pan i'm running out of uh, pan space here so i've got um oh running out of olive oil too good thing i stocked up prepper pantry uh, I've got the uh, mushrooms starting to cook at the back and I've got the honey mushrooms starting to boil at the front and we're going to get some onions, more olive oil, get some onions going here and then I'll chop up that tomato, get the oven preheated for fish. Parboil going on here. Okay. Those onions are looking good. These mushrooms, like just crank the heat up on them a little bit. We want to blast some of the water out of them and evaporate that off a bit. And these honey mushrooms, I'm just gonna grab a there it is. I'm just gonna sieve them out of here. And maybe for texture, rather than chop them, I'm just gonna throw them in there. They can be the big pieces in the mushroom sauce. Get that all cooking. All of them there. All right, looks good. I'm gonna dump that water. Just have a uh, little bit of water in the bottom of that big pan, and I'm gonna steam cook some fiddleheads. They're a little bit freezer burnt, these guys, but they're not in bad shape. I picked these in the spring, froze them five cups to a bag. I guess because I'm greedy. I'm not going to eat five cups at a time, so I basically chopped out one cup, 
cook that there. Get these onions and tomato softened up a little bit more. Might add a splash of water in there. And get these mushrooms going some more. I'm gonna go get grab my cream. Gonna grab some thyme, some pepper, some salt. I might not have time. Maybe I'm gonna use some uh, Italian style seasoning. And my oven is just about warmed up. I don't want to throw the fish in there just yet though, because I think I'm gonna have the fish done too quickly if I do that now, but I think those are looking good. Here, we, we're gonna have a look. Oh yeah. Looking good, looking good. Getting there. I think that is cooked enough that we can add it to our mushrooms. And then we get our mushrooms centered back on their element. That'll help them to cook a little better. Let's get that in there. Good. Like all my cooking room, this is going to be a little bit haphazard. It's already not really looking like the recipe I was following, but I'm not going to let that bother me. Put some Italian seasoning in there. Let's get some pepper. I really like this pink Himalayan sea salt. A little bit of that in there. Kind of a generous pinch. Pepper. Where's my pepper cracker? Pepper, pepper, pepper. So this is like, I'm a day later, Steve's gone home, Justin's gone home, I'm just flying solo here with all this food. Got my cream ready, my fiddleheads are almost cooked. The moisture is just about come out of this mushroom melange so I'm gonna throw an unmeasured quantity of half and half cream in there and then I'm gonna reduce it mm. and I think I could probably put my salmon in the oven cook that can come out and rest. Check out the fiddle heads. They're looking pretty much just about cooked. Oh yeah. That looks good. Keep boiling this down. We're gonna thicken it up. That fish is just gonna take a couple minutes and then we'll let it rest. We can uh, drain those fiddle heads. Okay, just about thickened up. Maybe a couple more minutes here. The fish needs three more minutes. I usually just cook salmon until it starts to 
form those little fat bubbles on the outside of it, which maybe some people consider overdone. Uh, but I haven't spiced the salmon, but I was going to put this mushroom sauce on top. So I'm just going to have a think about whether that's thick enough. And I think it is not yet. I'm going to a couple more minutes, and then we'll pull it off the element. We'll let it cool down a little bit. Get this meal together. Okay. I think that's, that's thick enough. Let's move this guy off the heat. And a little peek in the oven here. I think that salmon's probably done the way that I like it. So we'll take that out. And we'll set up, set up a plate. Mushroom sauce on salmon with wild fiddleheads. Let's put a little splash of this on the side. Two, a wah. There's a little nice wild food supper. That's one of those nice cutting boards that Adam Craig made. There it is. Catch, cook, and delivered. See you guys on the next one.